Say again. <laughs> more, more, more road games in Texas. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming, baby. Hope you guys had a good weekend. I know it's like West Texas, but do some of your you guys recruit Texas? Your, mm -hmm. your Texas players excited to play a game in their home state? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's it's um it's going to be a, a good atmosphere, and we have a good amount of our like to your point, BJ. Like we have a good amount of our uh, players from Texas, so anytime we can get back to Texas and play a game, I, I I was trying to think the other day, like just the last time we played a game in Texas was probably was it the bowl game when it got canceled? Was that the last time we played? Yeah, the one that never happened, right? No, but uh, that was the last time we were down there. So I'm excited for our guys um, just in general, but especially our guys from Texas are excited to get back home. You guys have been so dominant against the run the past two weeks. Why have you had so much success in that area? Yeah, I mean, credit to our players. Um, you know, they've, they've really taken a big step in, in the fundamentals and the techniques that make the different schemes to stop the run. And, and like we've talked about with you guys before, I mean, it is – and it's a new week every single week. It's um, – it's something that we make sure that we continue to install the fundamentals, the techniques that stop the run, because that is defense. If you can't stop the run, that's the first our first emphasis on defense is to stop the run. And if you don't do that, you are not going to be successful on defense. And obviously another big test coming this week um, from UTEP. But proud of how our guys have, have stopped the run um, the past two weeks. And now we just got to, just like everything, got to keep building on it. Kind of an obvious question, but how much easier does it make it to win a game when you can make an offense one-dimensional? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's paramount, regardless who you're playing. I mean, um, could, from a spread team to a team that maybe runs the ball all the time, like it doesn't matter. You have to stop the run to be, suc to be successful on defense um, because if an offense can do both, um, regardless, you're not going to be successful. And it's just the mentality of our team. And um, we tell our guys all the time, it's not just the D-line. It's not just the edge guys or the backers. It goes all the way from the corners to the nose guard because um, – Winning the line of scrimmage is 53 yards. It's all the way across the field. And depending on the set, someone's going to be brought into the fit. Depending on the defensive call, someone's going to be brought into the fit. And so breeding that mentality with our guys, and, and we do a ton of different things from run fit periods to the techniques we use to make sure that it is paramount we stop the run week in and week out. You guys, did, you guys spent a lot of time this offseason focusing on uh, developing a really dependable two deep there on the defensive mm -hmm. line. How has that improved depth kind of helped against the run? Oh, huge. I mean, especially up front, you have to roll, guys. Um, not one player is going to play the whole game, especially in the front seven. So having that dependable depth to where regardless of the series, the drive, um, if a starter gets out, that number two goes in, there cannot be a drop-off. And um, the mentality and the standard with which we play needs to be the exact same if it's a starter to a backup, and even in some cases maybe even the third guy, especially up front that goes in there. The standard is the standard, and they got to play with the same mentality. Um, and, and once again, Jim, I mean, hats off to our players. I mean, we spend a lot of time on third downs. Um, we call them the money downs because that's where, that's where you win on defense. And you do all that work to get to third down. It could be third and short, medium, long, XL, and all of them are not created the same. And so really hats off to our players, them taking the time with the walkthroughs um, to understand an offense and how we're being attacked on third down and then what is our plan to attack them. Um, and our guys have just done a great job buying into it. And uh, like I said, hats off to them. And, um, not perfect. There's still a lot of things on, on just one of those areas. Third downs, we've got to be better. But, I mean, it's a huge part to the game. Getting off the field on third down is, is paramount to being good on defense. We talk about attacking situations on defense. That and the red zone are the two biggest situations you've got to be good at on defense. And, um, and our guy, I'm really proud of how our guys just attacked it, and hats off to them. Yeah, 100%. And if, if you don't win first and second down, either one or two things, you're never going to get to third down. They're just going to keep moving the ball, or you're going to be in a lot of third and short situations. And that's really what has led to the success on third down is we've gotten them a lot in third and longs, which is obviously then um, is more in our favor. And so that's trying to get our guys um, understanding if you want to get on third down and go rush the passer and do some of these things, you got to stop the run on first and second, which will then put you in situation to be in a third and long situation where now – you can go get after that quarterback, and then that, the warfare and the pre-snap is on. We've heard a lot about Herbert Gumbert being this, this big, soft-spoken teddy bear type dude. What's uh, your you know, best, funniest, most memorable story about Herbert? <laughs> I got a lot from uh, old Herbert Gums is a, uh, is a phenomenal young man. Um, I'll never forget. I think I might have told you guys this before, but um, when I recruited him out of Die Ball, Texas, you know, he's got a – I mean, crazy story how God's worked in his life and his family. But, I mean, he's, he's been through a lot, been through a lot. And uh, the first time he was on, his air, on an airplane was on his official visit to Boise State. 
and on his way home, he was on a layover in Minnesota and had to sleep, uh, stay the night. And I'm like, Herbie, I promise you, that's not all the time when you're on a plane. you got to stay the night at the airport. But I'll never forget going out to see him at practice. Um, I mean, he's playing running back at 275 pounds, running, moving. And what I love about Herb is he is a soft-spoken guy, but he is tough as all get out now. I mean, don't – he's a, a, the kind of guy, don't get it twisted. He'll be soft-spoken, yes, sir, no, sir. Um, but he will – he's a tough son of a gun now that will work his tail off um, – to improve and get better, and hats off to Coach Kagan and our staff, just seeing his body completely change and grow to where he is now. He's still got a lot of growth um, to be had, but I'm cool to see the steps that Herbert Gums has taken. I think um, the best is yet to come for him. Yeah, and first off, Jay, I mean, you guys know me. I mean, I, I, the only, I adore these kids, man. I adore these players, and when he tore his uh, – you know, towards ACL, he's out for the season. Broke my heart because I, I love that kid. And you talk about a young man that works his tail off to prep and play a lot as a redshirt freshman and what we put on those linebackers in this defense, testament to him. So um, part broken for him, excited for him to recover and, and be back stronger. Um, so we're going to um, – it'll be a little bit of musical chairs in regards to moving some guys. And um, the Mike and the Will are so similar. We've obviously seen the success DJ's had for moving him from Mike to Will. So you're going to see a couple different guys kind of swing um, to make sure we still have the depth at the Mike and Will we need. So um, Brand Hawkins is going to play some Mike depending on situations. DJ can always swing back and forth. Um, so we're going to um, you know, kind of – do it by committee to, to, to find the best way we have that depth there at Mike and Will. You guys played more uh, dime in that game, mm -hmm. too. Uh, is that something you like that you think if you need it later in the season? How would you like how you have a team there and the extra DB in there? Yeah, I mean, especially what a team's doing, BJ. You know, um, an 11 personnel team or a 10 personnel team, I think there's a lot of merit to playing dime, which is what we played, like you said, last week, especially because of the space. A team like UT Martin, you know, they, they'll put those receivers – um, dang near on the sidelines. And so you've got to find ways to, um, to leverage that formation and, and attack that space. And so the more DBs you have on the field, you can leverage that formation more in it. And using it has nothing to do with, um, not as much to do with from a personnel standpoint, more in just leveraging the formation. And then we, we can be more multiple with, um, with another DB in the game in regards to our rotations, our, our pressures, or the looks we're giving um, and not giving it away by, um, by backer alignments and some of those things. So um, I think there's a lot of merit to our dime package. And, um, and definitely against UT Martin, it was something that we had, uh, you know, preseason scouted and that we were excited to use against them. And, um, and it, was, it was successful. So excited to keep growing that in the future. We play a team that's similar to them. Yeah, it was awesome for Shea to step up last year. I mean, a guy that, you know, was a true freshman. I mean, he came here early, but was a true freshman going in the game, getting a couple picks, playing hard. I mean, um, testament to him. And, he, and seeing him even from that game to where he is now and him continue to grow. I mean, Shea Odipo, he's going to keep growing. He's going to be a really good player for us. And it was cool watching that game over the summertime, but even now seeing some of the plays he made, the pick in the red zone, you know, and a couple other plays he made. Not only just the interceptions that everybody remembers, but um, – he did a lot of good things from a discipline standpoint, and um, so excited for to see him take a step. And I, and I mean it too. And I, I got to give just credit to our players, man. I, I adore these kids, and they are playing very, very hard right now. Not perfect, and we have a long way to go as a defense. But I'm very proud of how hard our guys are playing. Our guys are flying around. They're playing with a high level mentality, and um, excited for them to keep running. And, and like I said, it's all testament to our players. And we got to take another big step this week. Seven turnovers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, takeaways, getting the ball is is a huge part of, once again, what we do on defense. We talk about pursuit, tackling, and takeaways. Like That's really the keys to being good on defense outside of um, the schematic side of things. And so a team that has turned the ball over the past does, but also does not mean all of a sudden we're going to go out there and just take the ball from them. There, it's obviously going to be a big emphasis for them because in any game, which we've seen it good and bad, um, you take the ball away and you win the turnover battle, you're going to usually win that football game. Whatever the stat is, 95% of the time you're going to win that football game. So getting our guys just focused on um, balls in the air, it's our ball, tips and overthrows, got to get those. I mean, all the time that ball is our ball. Second man in, punching at it. So it's really just building the habits because um, we need to create more takeaways. And um, 
we got one last week from a, from a kickoff return or kickoff, excuse me. And so we need to find ways to take the ball away because that's game changing and it helps not only helps our team, but helps put our offense in a good spot. How much, how much do you want this defense to be perfect? Because you guys are playing lights out right now, but you gave up the long pass yep. to Mexico, one of the bigger plays yep. this last Saturday, probably, probably have some teaching moments. There. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. How much do you focus on one play when 99% of the time you're off lights out? Yeah. And I think, um, I think you, for us, you, you got to focus on it one play at a time and because it is, and like we've talked about even last week, guys, it's such a, it's so paramount because we can play great defense for 95% of the game. You play bad on one rep or three reps, then everyone's asking, what's going on with the defense? You guys give up 21 points. And so that's just the razor's edge you got to live on when you play defense, what you love about it and what our guys, I think, are getting to understand even more. Um, and so you got, I mean, the littlest details you got to focus on, because maybe it didn't show up maybe last week. Maybe someone wasn't in their gap or someone didn't play the technique perfect and we got away with it. But if we don't fix it, that's going to come up in a major way. And then all of a sudden you're giving up the rushing yards, you're giving up the explosive plays um, that prior just didn't show up. And so um, we have been just very, very focused. And every week, and I tell our guys, when we have our defensive meeting at the end of a, at the end of a game. I was like, guys, I adore you, but you're never going to come in here and I'm just going to give you guys the slow clap about how, like, that's never going to happen. I don't care if you give up zero yards. That's never going to happen. So I care about you. This staff cares about you so much. You're always going to come in here and these are going to be the things we got to grow in. And it all comes down to what are the emphasis of things, okay? How's our communication on our control? How's our pursuit? We get into the football. How's our tackling? And did we take the ball away? Usually it comes down to one of those things. And if you're doing those well, you're usually going to be playing good defense. But... Um, to your first question, I mean, we, we focus on the littlest details of obviously the plays that hit us, but even the ones that maybe didn't. Maybe all of a sudden we, uh, a guy got off a block and made a play, but we, we didn't fit it up the right way because that will be an explosive play in the future if we don't get it fixed. And so you live on that razor's edge on defense. That's what I love about coaching it because at any point it can be a big, an explosive play either way for our team or against us. And you have to be on point regardless of the situation because um, we're always in the reaction mode of what are we getting. And, and playing at a high level means you have to be on at all times. I know you touched on it, but what else stands out about a new tech offense? Yeah, I think they're really good up front. I think it's one of the better O lines we've seen all year. Very well coached. They give you a lot of different run schemes, different gap schemes, versions of mid zone, zone. The quarterback will even get involved in the run game. They play with a lot of different personnel. So for our for our defense, just ID in the sets with, you know, 10 personnel, 11, 21, 12. And they use a lot of different personnel in and out of drives. So putting our guys in different situations to see these sets. But I think their O-line is really good, really physical, create a lot of movement at the point of attack. I mean, we're seeing them play Oklahoma, and they're doing a really good job against them. Um, and then they got a couple different receivers um, that are good. Number one in particular, um, I mean, he's extremely explosive. They target him all the time. Um, but they got a, a group of receivers and tight ends that can catch the ball. So, I mean, a pretty good balanced attack. I mean, and, they, and outside of the takeaways, which has hurt them, um, I mean, we are ready for a big test this week. And, I, and no different than I told our guys. And they watch the film. And I tell them, you guys watch the film. I'm going to tell you that this is how good this team is. But you watch and they watch the film. Like, Coach, this team's, this team's good. They're going to be ready to go. And so um, they're a balanced attack. And they've not only can they line up in big boy sets and pound the rock, they got a great pass game out of out of spread sets that they can get to in a heartbeat, and um, and it makes and it puts a lot of stress on defense. How do you, how do you oh. know success on defense versus success on third down? You haven't had an opponent crack the thirty-one in the last two games. Mm -hmm. How much of that is also a result of your guys' ability to tackle well? No question, huge, how, huge. How, how would you assess your guys' ability to tackle and why is it important? Yeah, it's paramount, um, and that's why if we get too far, too much into the schemes and the fits and you lose sight of, like we talked about week one that hurt us against Oregon State, just the communication, the eye control, um, the pursuit and the tackling, that's defense. Like that's the, that's the bare bones of playing good defense. If you go too far away, and I got to check myself as a coach, if I'm going too much into schematics and a blitz, a pattern or this, and lose sight of just making the tackle, which usually keeps you outside of um, the red zone and, and, and winning third down. There's a lot of times, even this past game at UT Martin, a play in space, if it's a missed tackle, that's an explosive play. They're on the logo. They're rolling. But we make the tackle. That's the game. And training our guys and having different drills to make sure um, that we're tackling well. And our guys are tackling at a high level now. Now there's 
Um, a lot we still need to clean up in from a tackling standpoint. And each week we look at it and then, okay, what are some drills maybe we're missing that showed up in the game that we need to train this week in practice so that when we get to the game, they're not thinking about it. Because at that point, this game is a violent game. You just get them down. And, um, but it's everything, to your point, Jay, because all of a sudden a missed tackle here, a missed tackle there is either touchdowns, explosive plays, and now all of a sudden we're, our back's against the wall. You mentioned saying, like, putting on the tape, you know, showing, telling them how good they are, whatever. I mean, how do you, I mean, every week when you're saying this team's really good, this mm-hmm. team's really good, this team's really good, how do you get college kids to, to buy into that every single week when, when you're not, teams aren't on the same level? Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, and it goes back to a lot of what we talk about just in general, if you're an elite competitor, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You could be playing on paper the best team in the country, the worst team, a conference opponent, a non-conference opponent. But that's where for our guys, if you're an elite competitor, you're going to try and find every single inch you can to be elite at what you do. Well, how can I do my 111 for this defense? How can I do my 111 for this team? And then I want to go in that meeting room and I want to know, okay, I want to know my opponent like the back of my hand. That preparation will give me confidence so I can play fast, physical, and compete at a high level. And so... Not that every single one of our players are there yet. We're working to get them there. I think we're taking steps, but b- building them to make – dude, we're competitors. So it doesn't matter who lines up against us. Um, they're going to come ready to play. And we know that we're never going to play. There's never going to be our team on our schedule that isn't going to be ready to beat us at any moment. I don't care if they haven't won, haven't lost. How you prep doesn't change. And so that's why we try and breed to our guys is, hey, when you, you're never going to walk in a meeting room and be like, all right, guys, this team is um, – Average. This team's really good this week. This team's not that good because it doesn't matter. How you prep is going to create the confidence for you to play. And if I'm a competitor, I want to keep growing at everything um, every week. So then the opponent at some point is just it's just the next next team I'm going against and trying to build our guys into that. And I think we're getting close. Um, but a team like UTEP, the biggest thing for them is watch the film because guys, you watch the film. This is a good football team to play. It's a good football team, especially up front. And they have the guys that, like I said, they, they are going to be ready to play. And our guys see that. And so we got to have a great week of prep on a short week. And, and our guys will be ready to play because you got to live on that razor's edge. You can play a good defense. And all of a sudden, you have a couple lack of discipline plays. And now we're reeling. And that's something that uh, we uh, work our tail off to make sure it does not happen. But uh, proud of how our guys are playing hard.